After dinner, the guys gathered around a fire. They agreed to take turns sleeping to keep the fire going and scare wild animals away. Robert drew lots to be the first on duty, but he was very sleepy. Brian told him, It's okay, I can swap places with you if you guess my riddle. I'm as light as a feather, yet no man can hold me for long. What am I? Robert failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The answer is breath. Greg, Brian, and Lisa went to sleep, and Robert stayed by the fire. Early in the morning, Brian woke up and saw that the fire had gone out, and Robert was gone. Brian woke up Greg and Lisa, and they started looking for Robert. Can you help them find any clues on the beach? All four of them are barefoot, but now there are boot prints in the sand, and a drone is flying in the sky along with the birds. It seems that this island is not as deserted as they thought. Brian, Lisa, and Greg walked around the island and found a villa on a rock. They wanted to come closer, but suddenly they heard Lisa scream. Someone left a trap in the jungle and the girl fell into a well filled with trash. It was very deep, and Brian and Greg couldn't help her get out. Suddenly, it started to rain, and the pit began to fill with water very quickly. Lisa screamed, Help me, please! I can't swim! What should Lisa do to survive? She can take these two empty canisters and use them as a life buoy. And when the water level rises, she'll get out easily. The guys continued their journey to the mysterious villa. On the gate, they saw a combination lock with this clue. In the first line, one number is correct and well placed. In the second line, nothing is correct. In the third line, two numbers are correct, but in the wrong places. In the fourth line, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. And in the fifth line, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys open the gate? Let's start with statement 2 and exclude numbers 9, 2, and 0. From statement 3, we can conclude that 5 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Let's take a look at statements 4 and 5. Both lines say that one digit is correct, but in the wrong place. So, the remaining digit can be either 8 or 6, but we already know that 7 is in the code. Therefore, the digit that fits statement 5 is 7. Now we can exclude 6 and conclude that the remaining digit must be 8. Now, let's determine the order. In statement 3, we have two correct numbers in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we only have one option. To put 7 first and 5 second. Therefore, the correct code is 758. The guys entered the villa. The backyard was full of pirates, and they were having a pool party. Suddenly, Lisa began to cry. Can you guess why? Robert is chilling with this lady pirate in the swimming pool. The girl is just jealous. When they finally came up to Robert, he said, Hey guys, check it out. These pirates let me join them. Greg, Lisa, and Brian decided to leave that place as soon as possible. But Robert wanted to stay because he got engaged with Gemma. She was a big boss there. Everyone worked for her. Brian looked around, searching for a way out. He noticed these three guys. He realized that one of them was an imposter. What about you? Can you see the imposter? It's the third guy. He has a police badge. He must be working undercover. The police officer's name was Mike. Brian asked him for help. Mike pretended that he didn't speak English, but later he gave Brian this note. 
It was encrypted, and the ink was to disappear in 10 seconds. Can you crack the code? It says, helicopter. Greg, Lisa, and Brian jumped into the helicopter. Mike tried to start the machine with a stolen key, but the system demanded a password. Here's a hint. I am the beginning of sorrow and the end of sickness. You cannot express happiness without me, yet I am in the midst of crosses. I am always at risk, yet never in danger. You may find me in the sun, but I am never out of the darkness. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is the letter S. So Mia wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her father didn't let her. Mia thought for a while and remembered her grandparents had just moved to their new one-story country house. She asked her dad if she could visit them at the weekend, and the man agreed. But Mia went to the party instead. When she got back home after the weekend, her father asked her if she had had a good time. Mia replied she helped in the garden a little and spent the rest of the day upstairs. Her father immediately knew she was lying. How? Mia said she'd been upstairs, but her grandparents' house is a one-story cottage. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 11 plus 3 equals 2. 10 plus 5 equals 3. Now, how is that possible? It makes sense when we talk about time. 11 o'clock plus 3 hours is 2 o'clock. 10 o'clock plus 5 hours is 3 o'clock. One king wants to find out which of his three sons is the smartest. He takes three chests and puts his crown in one of them. On each chest, there's a statement, but only one of these statements is true. The crown is in this chest. The crown isn't in this chest. The crown isn't in chest number one. Each person can only open one chest. The son who figures out where the crown is will be the next king. But can you solve this riddle? If the first statement is true, the other two must be false. It's not so because the second statement turns out to be correct. Uh So this assumption's wrong. If the second statement is true, the crown isn't in the first chest. It's not in the second chest either. Then it must be in the third one. But this makes the third statement correct, Uh although it shouldn't be. If the third statement is true, the first one's wrong and there's no crown in the first chest. The second statement's also wrong. Now, there are no contradictions. The crown's in the second chest. Here's a sequence of letters. Which letter should you add? The missing letter is F. If you put it at the end, you'll get E. James and Taylor were best friends in elementary school. Unfortunately, when the children were 10, James and his parents moved to another state. The friends lost contact. 15 years later, James and Taylor accidentally bumped into each other in a cafe. It was their first meeting since school. They recognized each other and started talking. It turned out Taylor was already married and had daughter. Wow, said James, does she look like her dad? Oh no, Taylor said, the girl's a mini version of her mother. Ah, so she must be a blonde with blue eyes. This time, James was right. How did he understand that? Taylor's a girl. She's the mother, and James only needed to describe her. You're outside a room with three switches in the off position. Your task is to find out which one turns on the light in the room. You can flip as many switches as you want, but you can walk into the room and check if the light's on only once. 
How can you understand which switch controls the light bulb? Turn on two random switches and wait for a couple of minutes. Then, turn one of them off and walk into the room. If the light's on, the switch connected to the bulb is the one you left in the on position. If the room's dark, touch the light bulb. If it's hot, then the controlling switch is the one you just turned off. If the light bulb is cold, the correct switch is the only one you haven't touched. Esme got lost in the forest. She was wandering around for the whole day. Finally, at dusk, she saw a spooky house. A witch lived there. The girl had nowhere else to go, so she entered the house and asked for help. The witch said if Esme solved her riddle, she'd be free to leave in the morning. Here's how the riddle went. 17J, 70M, 96A, 162J, 256S, 354, hmm, what's the missing letter? The 17th day of the year is in January. The 70th day of the year is in March. The 96th is in April. The 162nd in June. And the day 256 is in September. Day 354 is in December. The missing letter is D. A young girl got her first job as a maid in a rich lady's house. Once, when she was tidying up, she noticed a very expensive collection of books. She made a break to look through one of them and then returned it to the shelf. The girl kept working until the very evening. No one else was at home. After finishing her work, the maid returned to the shelf and discovered that the sixth book was missing. But she clearly remembered that the book had been there before. It was the one she had been looking through. When the lady returned, the girl confessed she lost the book. But the woman only laughed and said everything was fine. Nothing was missing. How come? The collection had 8 books. The ninth book was actually the 6th one. The girl accidentally put it upside down. What can you catch but never throw? A cold. A team of video bloggers headed to a famous haunted house to make a video about the mysteries hidden inside. When they arrived, they didn't see anything strange. The house didn't look creepy at all. The guys walked up to the building, but cameraman George turned around and refused to enter the house. His friends tried to convince him, but the guy insisted they should leave the area immediately. His friends ignored his warnings and entered the building. George was waiting for them in the street all night, but they never came out. Look at the picture and try to detect what was wrong with the house. Look at the ground. All footprints lead to the house, but there are no footprints leading away from the building. Ooh. I always run, but I never walk. I have a mouth, but I never talk. I have a head, but I never weep. What am I? That's right, I'm a river. Look at the picture. Can you spot a burglar? That's right! The thief is inside the house on the left, standing next to the window. One Saturday morning, two sisters, Jenny and Maya, played hide-and-seek at home. It was Jenny's turn to hide, and she decided to bring the game to the next level. So she got on her longboard, left the house, and hit the road. Maya counted to 100 and began looking for Jenny. She searched the entire house but didn't find her sister. The teenager started to worry. She went out to the street and decided to ask the neighbors. Alice said she had been mowing the lawn all morning and hadn't seen anyone. Derek said he had been woken up by the sound of longboard wheels. 
Lisa said she had been on a business trip and had just returned. But Maya knew for sure that one of her neighbors was lying. Who was it? Alice lied. Take a closer look. Her lawn isn't mowed. What letter of the alphabet is also an organ in the human body? It's the letter I. Ay ay ay. A princess escaped from a dragon who kept her in a tower. She was walking along a dark underground hall with a sand floor when suddenly she saw three tunnels. A fire was blazing inside the first tunnel. Toxic acid was dripping from the ceiling in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with venomous scorpions. Five minutes later, the princess got to the surface and ran through the forest toward her kingdom. Which tunnel did she choose? The first tunnel. She put out the flames with sand. Smart princess. I can be touched, but I can't be seen. What am I? The heart is the right answer. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The sign says, fresh meat. Mike woke up in the middle of the night because he had a nightmare. He looked around and realized he was trapped in a weird house. Mike searched the place and found four doors to freedom. But the first door led to space. Behind the second door, there was a giant magnifying glass. Anyone who stepped inside would be burned by the sun in no time. The third door was hiding a pride of hungry lions. And behind the fourth door, there was an ocean swarming with sharks. Help Mike choose the right door. It's the second one. Sun rays aren't dangerous at night, and Mike can easily walk through that door. It's a pity I'm more of a tea person. I knew this one looked more familiar. Well, I'm not an expert in gas and oil, but I might know the answer. And I was right. This one is indeed tricky. Now I know what the logo of my favorite pizza place looks like. Do you know which logo this famous electronics company has? Oh, it was a lucky guess. The difference between these logos is tiny, but one of them is wrong. The one on the left represents the world-known software and computer manufacturer. Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola? And the answer is (laughs) Coca-Cola. Just kidding. The first logo is the correct one. Yummy. I'm sure you'll get this one right. Uh Uh-oh, I thought this logo was a bit wavier. Now, we'll find out how often you watch MTV. Eh, It turns out I watch it often enough. (laughs) Um, they look the same to me. I see the difference now, but it's too late. Duh! 
Red, white, blue versus red, white, blue. Tough choice. If you pick the logo on the left, you're absolutely right. I'm not sure about this one. Do you know the answer? I knew the logo on the right was the one. Social media fans, use your superpowers. Who would have thought? I'm not an Insta person. Ha! I've used this service often enough to know the right logo. It's the one on the left. Wow, they weren't kidding about mind-boggling. Okay, the right logo is the one on the left. Got that? Do you like making and sharing short videos? Then you must know which TikTok logo is the right one. Did you pick the one on the left? Then you totally nailed it. How often do you eat burgers? Let's check. It seems I should treat myself to burgers more often. Oh no, colors again? Wow, that was a tough one. You mean I had to keep in mind the color of his bow? Apparently, I'm good at distinguishing colors. Was your guess correct? I've been to Subway hundreds of times. Never knew their logo can be so confusing. The one on the right. Ah, my intuition didn't let me down. And now, you want me to choose between two blue colors? Wicked. First, the darker blue, then the lighter. That's the right logo. You must be kidding me! The logo on the right seemed more familiar, and no wonder it's the correct logo. Wait, are they even different? Ah, I see. They decided to make the robot's antenna as simple as possible. A shrill ringing of your phone jolts you awake. Your friend, the best detective in the city, is on the line. I don't have time to explain. I'm leaving the city in 20 minutes. You'll have to replace me for the next week or two. Don't try to contact me. As he hangs up, you're left sitting on your bed, the phone in your hand, staring into the darkness of your room. You have to deal with your first case already in the morning. An anxious man rushes into your friend's office. I work as a cashier in a clothing store. Last night, I was the one to lock it up. As I was counting the money, the room suddenly went dark. There was some problem with the light bulb. I climbed the table and grabbed it. But by doing it, I burned my hand, jerked it back, fell to the floor, and lost consciousness. When I came to my senses, the money was gone. You examine the room attentively and realize the man is lying. What makes you think so? The light bulb the cashier told you about is an LED one. Such light bulbs don't get hot. Your first real case makes you hungry. You go to the nearest restaurant to get something to eat. But as soon as you enter, you hear loud, angry voices. A waitress and a visitor are arguing. You also ordered chicken wings, and you have to pay for this dish. It's the waitress. The visitor looks tired and sleepy. But I didn't. I haven't been here longer than an hour. 
Yes, I did doze off, but it doesn't mean I don't remember my order. You can't help but step in. You know very well that this man couldn't have ordered chicken wings, you say. How did you figure it out? You spotted a note on the wall. It says, the kitchen works till 1 p.m. today. It's now 3 p.m. The man claims he's been there for an hour, which means he came well after the kitchen was closed. After the accident, you decide to have a meal at another cafe. But as you come closer, you see a crying lady. I was going to cross the road when some woman grabbed my purse and disappeared. I noticed her enter this cafe. Can you help me get my things back? You enter the cafe. Ah, uh, that's my purse, right between those two women. But I can't recognize the one who took it. I didn't have time to look at her attentively. You don't need much time to figure out which woman is guilty. It's the one on the left. The woman on the right has her left arm in a cast. If she had taken the purse, she'd have put it on the right side of herself. After such an eventful day, you're exhausted. You fall asleep as soon as your head touches the pillow. But you get woken up just a few hours later. Another day, another case. Oh, you're finally here. A man tied to a chair looks happy. Someone broke into my house this night, tied me, and stole all our valuables. Our mailman came early in the morning to deliver newspapers. He must have heard me shouting for help and called the police. Luckily, all our stuff was insured. But I hope to deal with this problem before my wife finds out about this. You arrest the man for attempting insurance fraud. Why? You paid attention that the newspapers were on the table in the hall, not lying on the floor near the mail slot. Someone must have put them there. It could only be the house owner or his wife, who was an accomplice. After the police arrive, you leave the man's house and immediately receive a new call. Mrs. Smith claims that her neighbor, Mrs. Miller, has stolen her laundry. The woman says she hung the laundry in her backyard at 10 a.m. And when she went out of the house two hours later, she saw Mrs. Miller putting it in her bag. I didn't do this. It's a lie. The other woman looks angry. You look around and ask Mrs. Smith to go to the police station with you for trying to slander her neighbor. How did you figure out that Mrs. Smith was lying? It's freezing outside and there's snow on the roofs. In two hours, damp laundry would be so frozen, it'd be impossible to fold it and put it in a bag. Your phone rings again. It's a woman who works at a museum. You must help me, she cries. When you arrive at the museum, she tells you her story. Yesterday, I stayed late at work. I needed to prepare some documents. I was sitting at this table. The overhead lights were off, and the only source of light was my desk lamp. I was listening to music when, suddenly, I saw a shadow to the right of the table. I realized it was a person jumping out of the open window. I immediately switched on the overhead lights and discovered that an ancient vase I kept in my office was gone. This vase costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. You didn't believe this story. Why? If the only source of light had been a desk lamp standing in front of the woman, she wouldn't have noticed a shadow to the right of the table. 